Good evening. Good to see uh, those of you that are watching uh, on the Facebook Live or wherever uh, you're watching from. Um, this evening, uh, my assignment for Reformation Renewal Rally sermons in the real work of the Holy Spirit is the indwelling, the new power that we receive uh, once we uh, give our heart and life to Jesus Christ. And uh, first I would like to, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come this evening, we thank you, Father, for your presence. For without your presence, Lord, uh, we can do nothing within ourselves. Father, I pray that you will just use this piece of clay to bring forth the truth of your words to the church, to your church, and to your people. May lives be changed and people be lifted up because of you. Empty myself of me, Father, allow the Holy Spirit to speak forth this evening. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. First off, I'd like to read, and first off, I want to thank the uh, committee for uh, allowing me, giving me the honor of bringing forth one of these sermons for the Reformation Renewal Rally. It's uh, quite an honor, and I do appreciate it, and I'm very humbled because of it. But again, the title of mine this evening is simply in the indwelling, the new power we receive once we give our heart and life to Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit moves in. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, is therefore... It says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So once we surrender our life to Jesus Christ, we are infilled with the Holy Spirit. And now, there are many types of spiritual works that are credited to the Holy Spirit. However, a good and a close look at Scripture cleans up a list and gives us a glimpse of the important work of the Holy Spirit and what He does within us. Again, there are five main works of the Spirit that direct us into becoming who we are spiritually. There's the baptism, the new position, the regeneration, the new life, and then my topic, the indwelling, the new power, and then also the gifting, the new purpose and also the sealing, the new destiny. And at the moment of conversion, we are absolutely, without a doubt, permanently indwelt by our great God, the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, with that filling of the Holy Ghost that will lead, guide, and direct our daily lives. In Romans chapter 8, verses uh, 9, 10, 11, but actually we're going to start reading a little bit prior to that. We're going to start reading in verse 1 in Romans chapter 8. Is therefore, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life is Christ Jesus, hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do not mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject of the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then that they are in the flesh cannot please God. Now pay particular attention to these verses. But ye are not in the flesh. But in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you, 
Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. So the Holy Spirit dwells within us. And because of Jesus Christ being crucified, buried, and resurrected on the third day that he was raised up, he, he, he was able to raise himself up, and, and he raised him from the dead so that we could be quickened by the Holy Spirit. So just a couple of, of things this evening. The Holy Spirit supplies us with an inerrant power that's activated through the continued filling. Now, the continued filling, it's not just once, but it's a continual filling. Again, just like my car or your automobile, you can't fill it up once, just start driving it and drive it for an eternity without expecting to have to put fuel back in it to keep it going. The same way with us spiritually, we must be continually filled with the Spirit so it indwells there so that we can keep going and doing what Christ would have us do and be the child of God He wants us to be. In Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, it says, Be not drunk with wine wherein it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And in Luke chapter 1, verse 15, for he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink, but he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. See, being filled with the Spirit is being fully submitted to the Holy Spirit's control. We are indwelled with this new power. And in Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it states this, and Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us and directs us on a daily basis. And we must allow Him to continue to infill us so that we can keep going and keep going. Like the Energizer money just keeps going and going and going. We have to be the same way and continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit to continue to keep on keeping on. And being filled with the Holy Spirit is to be empowered. There are a lot of scriptures that tell us of this indwelling new power that we can have. Luke chapter 24, verse 49. says, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. We must receive that power from on, on, on high. I can't do nothing within myself. I can only do what I do through Christ who strengthens me through His Holy Spirit on a daily basis. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and in Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. But we, but we shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon us. When the Holy Ghost comes upon us, when we get saved, we're born again, then we go forth from the church and we go outside into the world, and that's where we as the church should really be the church so they can see who Jesus is. I want people to see Jesus in me without me ever, ever having to open my mouth, that they know that I have something that they want. So we should have a smile on our face. Even though we're going through difficulties, even though we're going through trials, we still should have a smile on our face and be able to keep on keeping on on a daily basis, even in a country, in a world that is messed up as it is today, with all the things that are going on, and I don't have to bring them up, you know what they are. 
the Holy Spirit can help us through those things. Acts chapter 4, verse 31 says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. It's high time that we as the church stand up and be the church and be bold and have holy boldness. You don't have to be a Bible thumper, but we still have to live a life and live an example and be an example for those around about us. And we cannot do that if we're not filled with the Holy Spirit and Him leading and guiding and directing us on a daily basis. In Acts chapter 2, verse 4, in the, uh, in the very first part, it says, And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. See, being filled or indwelt coincides with receiving power from God. We need God's power to be bold in our walk and in our testimony. And our witness as we walk here on this earth and share this Jesus that we know personally with the lost and a dying world in which we live, so to be filled or be indwelt is to be totally submissive and to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, which results in the empowerment by and of the Holy Spirit. We need to be sure that we are always in tune with the Holy Spirit. One of the most difficult things we have that we lose control of many times is our tongue. Our tongue sometimes speaks before our brain engages. And if we would allow the Holy Spirit to truly indwell in us and empower us. He will control our thoughts, and we will be able to say things that won't be offensive to other people. And in today's society, it seems that we have lost the capability to be able to have a civil conversation with anyone that we don't agree with. But we need to realize and know that we need to share God's love. And the only way we can do that is with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit within us. Yet we can. And it is possible to quench and or to grieve the Spirit as well. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 19, tells us simply to quench not the Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30, in the part, first part, it says, Then grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. See, we need to think of the fact that we are filled, but it's not, it's not like, is my coffee cup half full or half empty? Or is it partially full? See, it's an indwelling. We either have the third person of the Godhead, living and ruling and reigning within us, or we don't. It's not either or, or it's not a partial feeling. Feeling, We are either infilled and dwelt with the power of the Holy Spirit, or we're not. We are filled, we are indwelt as soon as we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts and lives. The Holy Spirit doesn't leave us and come back to us and leave us and come back to us as some teach in many other denominations. When we get saved, the Holy Spirit moves in. And He doesn't leave unless we leave. He remains with us. And we need to have that indwelling power. Being filled with the Spirit is being fully submitted to the Holy Spirit's control. And then we are indwelt, indwelled with this new power. In Luke chapter 4, verse 1, it says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. 
See, God wants full and total control of our lives. People choose, and it's up to you, it's up to me. People choose to not allow Christ to have full control or the Holy Spirit not to have full control. And when we do this, what we're doing is we're quenching the Spirit. We're holding Him back. It's time that we as the church begin to live our lives with the Holy Spirit having full control and allowing the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and direct, and control the entirety of our lives. This would include our mind, our thoughts, even that unruly, as I spoke of just a moment ago, that unruly member called the tongue. We cannot control our tongues without the indwelling of the Holy Spirit by giving Him the reins so He has full reign on our tongue, on us. We must be indwelt, filled with the Holy Spirit. If we expect to see Jesus when this life is over, we must be filled and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us, to lead us, to guide us, to direct us, to help us in a difficult time, in a difficult country, in a difficult world in which we are seated at this time. Yet I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt we are here because it's our time and it's our time as the church to stand up and to truly be the church and show the world what they need and what the world needs today is Jesus Christ and they need the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to help them make it through this life. So in closing today, I pray that you know today that you have allowed the Holy Spirit to fully dwell within as we walk in this world and we share Jesus with those that we come in contact with. Everywhere we go, allow the opportunity for Christ to open the door to be able to speak the name of Jesus to those that we come in contact with. Whether it's through prayer or whatever it may be, we need to be sure that the Holy Spirit is leading us. Allow your life to let Jesus, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, to shine through you so others can see Jesus in us without us ever saying one word. Let Jesus shine from us. And the people will see, wow, what, what do they have? that I don't have. I know the troubles and the trials and the struggles that they're going through and their family's going through, but yet they still have a smile on their face and a glow about them. So that's the opportunity to tell them about Jesus, how he can indwell within them. And we need that today in God's church, in the church, within us, in this world in which we live today. God bless you. And thank you so much for allowing me to bring forth what God had given me this evening. May you be blessed, and I pray that you are encouraged by the Word, and that you will allow the Holy Spirit, the real work of the Holy Spirit, to indwell within you and to lead you on a daily basis. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, again as we come to you, Father, I want to thank you for the words that you have given us this evening. Father, I thank you for your precious word. Because, Father, it is a light into our path. And we thank you because it feeds our soul, it feeds our spirit. And Father, may each one of us, myself included and those watching, Father, may each one of us seek to be filled 
with the Holy Spirit. Allow that indwelling to shine forth from us so that others can see Jesus in us. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.